welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. It's kind of a weird morning. I was supposed to be heading towards Southern Ohio, to our Southern Ohio cabin, to go muzzleloader hunting this weekend. But we've had a uh, little bit of a problem down in Tennessee where the power's been out down there. They had a snowstorm come through there Monday. Today's Thursday. The power was still out. I was gonna wait till today to see what happens. I'm heading down Tennessee. Once I get to Columbus, if the power's still out, I'm gonna try to go to Tennessee and see uh, if there's anything I can do to help keep our pipes from freezing, our hot tub from freezing. I've got a generator in the back. I've got some uh, extension cords, 10 gallons of fuel. If I get to Columbus and for some reason the power miraculously comes back on, I'll hang a left on I-70 and I'll hit to the cabin in Southern Ohio. The only bad thing is right now is that there's a snowstorm coming through Kentucky. So I'm going to have to go through some uh, bad weather to get to Tennessee. Tonight, Tennessee is going to get hit with some more snow and temperatures down around close to the single digits. So I definitely want to be there if there's no power to try to keep the cabin warm somehow. So I'll check back with you when I get down to my Columbus. We'll see what happens. situation so I'm gonna go keep heading south towards Tennessee. I'm not looking forward to driving through the snowstorm morning in Kentucky. If I get down there early enough maybe I'll miss most of it. Entering Kentucky and then about an hour into Kentucky the weather started changing. In a few minutes this truck is going to spin out in front of me and it's going to be rather dramatic but unfortunately the camera was not on when it happened and I didn't think about turning it on while he was doing it in front of me. It's usually not a big deal in northern Ohio when we get six to eight inches of snow especially on the freeway people usually just slow down and everybody keeps moving forward but in Kentucky it seems like it's a different story at least with this storm. As things are slowing up on I-75 South, the Waze app wants me to get off the freeway and bypass part of the slowdown. Back on I-75 again. Two hundred and eleven miles to go. Here's a closed and northbound lane of I-75. So the vehicle in front of me is okay, and this truck is okay, but there's a truck in front of him taking up both sides of the ramp, and he's not moving, he's stuck, which is blocking everybody else up behind us. I-75 is still a dead stop. Waze told me to get off at this ramp, but it probably didn't know about these trucks being stuck here. Now my original arrival time was 3.30, which it is now 3.20. Waze is saying my arrival time now is going to be around 7 o'clock, but I think that's a pretty early estimate the way things are going right now. I've basically been stuck in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm told to get off and redirect it, and then the redirection has a truck jackknife, and then I have to go back from where I came from, but then there's some other emergency over there, and it's just uh, getting nowhere fast, and it's very frustrating. And that is I-75 down there, and believe it or not, my only option is to get back on it. life in the slow lane. Every time I see a route change pop up, I'm just ignoring it now. And every time a route change comes up, it adds 25 or 30 or sometimes 90 minutes to my arrival time. <laughs> My 
Well, new plan. Gonna have to spend a night at a hotel. Parts of the freeways closed and route to Tennessee. <laughs> and its hotel is 13 miles away, and it's saying it's gonna take two hours to get there. Karen got it for me. It's the only one left in the area. I'm a little leery about not making it to the cabin with the temperatures getting so cold tonight. But what can you do? I'm back on I-75 and the hotel is about 11 miles just off of I-75. And right now the freeway is an ice rink, literally. But I gotta say that this is the quickest I've been moving now in a couple hours. And even though we're only going about five, 10 miles an hour, it feels much, much better than just sitting in one spot for an hour. It's 10 o'clock at night and this is my accommodations. The cable TV doesn't work, so they knocked $10 off my bill. Going to try to get up early and see what the roads are like and um, hopefully get out of here at least by 8. Temperature is 8 degrees this morning, and I thought with my luck, my battery will be dead. It is going on 6 years old, and I've been meaning to change it these last couple weeks. And I'm definitely going to do it when I get back home. morning. I got on the road about 6 a.m. and I'm in our first detour already. They closed the freeway because of an accident up ahead so now we're on back roads for about 13 miles before we jump back on the freeway. I know my windshield was pretty dirty but it appears that my windshield fluid is frozen. My wipers are pretty stiff too so they're not going to really clean the windshield well. If it gets any worse I'll have to pull it to a gas station or throw some snow or water on it, hopefully give me a little bit better visual out the front windshield. Still have about another two hours and 33 minutes according to Google Maps, but I think it's going to be a little bit longer than that. The temperature down by Tennessee is uh, in the low teens. I'm a little concerned that um, me not getting there yesterday is going to create some problems with the pipes, maybe the toilets. In the hot tub. All right, I'm making the final approach to the cabin. I'm still on the lower level, be heading up the mountain in a little bit. It looks like there's only about a half inch to inch of snow down here, which is good. They were calling for a little bit more. Of course, it's a different story when you go up on top of the mountain, so there could be more snow up there. I am a little anxious to wonder just uh, what the condition of things are and uh, how much longer that power is going to be out. When I hook up the generator, I know I can power a few things, but most of the heavy duty stuff like the uh, heat pumps, the uh, hot tub, and I don't even know if the hot water tank, if I'll be able to power that with my generator. I should be able to get all the little minor stuff going. Not sure why this car is backing out and not going down the road, but it can't be a good sign. So the guy told me 30 minutes, so I'm sitting here waiting, and I told him I'd turn the timer on and see how close he is. So Hopefully 30 more minutes so I can get up there. Sorry for moving the camera so quick, but I was double checking to make sure the wires above me were not going to fall once the tension was let loose. I made it. First thing I want to do is just turn the fireplace on. Oh no. What the heck? Thirty-five. I got the fireplace going and it's the best place to be sitting right now. It's pretty chilly inside the cabin. I'm doing some modifications to my 30 amp cord so I can just wire it directly into the panel. 
I know it's probably not going to do a lot, but I brought my Mr. Buddy heater and I'm going to use it to hopefully take a little bit of the chill out of the air and just keep it near the water pipes. Now, I'm not trying to teach a lesson in electricity here, and some of you probably know what I'm doing, but if anybody attempts something like this, they should make sure that that main breaker is off throughout this whole process. With the fireplace going, the temperature has gone up a couple of degrees. Okay, got my panel hooked up. As you can see, there's some lights on here in the basement. I flipped on the necessary breakers that I need for now. Let's just go check upstairs. If the fan, oh yeah, that's good. We'll circulate some air around this. Circulate some of that warm air. Generator just kicked off for some reason. I'm not sure why. I clicked everything off down in the basement and restarted again. So we're back up and running. And um, I tried turning on the hot tub with the generator and it ran for about 10-15 minutes and then the hot tub something clicked off I don't know if it was a ground fault with the hot tub or if it was a circuit breaker with the generator generator kept running I noticed a pitch a change in pitch of the generator I looked at the screen on the hot tub and it was off while it was on I did see that the water was at 62 degrees so I feel a little bit better about that leaving it go tonight when it goes down into the single digits again. I'm looking at the history of the highs and lows of the thermometer and I'm finding out that the lowest temperature was 34 degrees on the day I arrived. Without electricity, I don't have water either, so I'm just going to try to keep dishes to a minimum and heat up this container and just heat right out of it and use a plastic fork. Now tonight I'm going to sleep upstairs. I got the temperature up to 65. When I came uh, about six hours ago, it was 35 in the house, so we're slowly getting warm. It's going to take a while for everything, to, all the surfaces to get warm back up again. But I'm going to sleep upstairs because all the heat's coming up tonight. I'll So it's been a long 36 hours, getting dark outside. I'm gonna let the generator go for a little bit longer, but the rest of the evening, I'm gonna use the little portable power station. I got my lamp plugged into there. I'm gonna charge my phone and some devices overnight. And um, that way the generator's not running, making noise all night. And I'll probably shut the fireplace down in a couple hours. It's about 67 degrees up here. It's going down to about 13 tonight. So it'll probably be chilly in the morning and we'll just do the whole process over again. But uh, I think I'm gonna have a good night's sleep and hopefully our power will come back on sometime tomorrow. Just to give you a little update, I was about to go to bed for the evening. I just shut off the generator. I'm working off of my little portable power station and across the way, I don't know if you can see it through our windows out here, they've got some light. Their power just came on a few minutes ago. And then if you look down below, there's a cabin down below us and their power is back on. And then there's some, you probably can't see those, but looks like the power is slowly coming back on, but it's not on here. And we probably got about at least three quarters of the community that's still out. It's the next morning I got up, I checked the outage map and we're down around 2,800 people without power and we're still one of them. This generator is pretty heavy and I was worried that when I got here I'd have to take it out of the truck and maybe get it closer to the house. But it worked out that the cord was long enough. Going through that little vent on the side of the basement was perfect. And I can just leave it in the truck and don't have to lug this thing back into the truck when we're all done.
that plugged in. Solo cups can be used for many different uses, and I'm using this as a cereal bowl today. I just got a call on the phone that we should have power, and I looked at the neighbors, and there's lights inside their vacant cabin right now. I can't tell until I turn my generator off, so I'm going to do that right now. All right, if you need a hand or something, let me know. I'm up here. Of course, I got a lot to do. I had to leave tomorrow, but if you need something, just give me a holler. Yep. Yeah, I came. Next, I gotta go check to see if that hot tub clicks on. Hopefully, I didn't mess with it when I took the generator up to it. I can hear it. As things are coming back online here, some other cabin owners are asking me to check on their cabin. I went in this one and the water should be on, but nothing's running. So I'm going to check in their basement, see if the pipes are froze. It doesn't have a key, so I have to use this old screwdriver. doesn't feel frozen maybe the water is just getting here or maybe it is froze somewhere else down the line from my cabin coming to the close of my second night hopefully tomorrow morning I'm gonna get out of here because there's just been one thing after another these last couple days the last thing was is that our water still wasn't on because where our well pump is they didn't have power yet we finally got water about two hours ago I took a shower which was nice I decided to change the hot tub water, so I drained the hot tub, go to fill it, and my frost-free spigot was busted. By the time I found out, I had water from the corner here, coming all the way to the carpet, over to the couch, and a little bit of a mess. I'm a little frustrated because our cleaner should know better to disconnect the hose in the wintertime. The hose was connected when I got here, and it was frozen in there and I was crossing my fingers that that didn't burst but I should have checked it right away when I first started filling up the hot tub but I got carried away rinsing it off and cleaning it. Long story short now I need a way to fill the hot tub up and that spigot is no good anymore until I get a plumber in here. So I had to run a hose from our parking lot up our porch through the door across the dining room here through the back door and connected to another hose so I could fill the hot tub up. We have renters coming that should have been here two days ago, but I held them off because of the electrical problems and they're showing up tomorrow. So I wanted everything to be all set when they got here. And I'm looking forward to leaving in the morning. Hopefully nothing happens. If something happens, I'll post it with this video. But if you don't hear from me, I made it home okay. And I posted the video and we'll move on to tractor videos and hunting videos in Southern Ohio and skip Tennessee for a little while. Take care, everybody, and don't forget to keep an eye on us. Well, you can subscribe, too, and hit the like button. And on that little bell when you feel like uh, you want to know when another video is coming out. Have a good night.